Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you for joining us uh, wherever you are in the world. Uh, this is our August Zangati Solution Provider webinar. Uh, so we'll go for about an hour, um, and I do have this recorded. So if your teammate did not make it, we will be sending it out afterwards. Uh, first of all, uh, we have a guest speaker today, uh, Brian Diamond, ha who has over 30 years of field experience in running system integration companies, uh, partnering with uh, enterprise experts from VMware, Citrix, Microsoft, and a host of uh, hardware vendors, comes from, uh, joins us from Land Status out of Connecticut. It's a consulting firm that helps clients uh, with challenges of uh, moving to a virtual world. Uh, they sell products and services to solve client-specific business problems, and he'll be describing that in some detail. Uh, what we will also be having is a brief demo. Uh, once uh, uh, Brian is done with the customer issues that he's faced in uh, the industry today, and then I'll cover off with uh, the program and some new features, including new promos that just announced this month. Uh, Brian, you want to go ahead? Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. And if you can make me the presenter, um, I can on uh, it. show my screen. There you are. So I'm hoping that everybody can uh, see my screen that has uh, basically the title slide. I have three computers, so I want to make sure everybody sees the, the right things. So yes, we've thank got you it. Again. Thank you again for introducing me. I am Brian Diamond. I, I'm the CEO and owner of Land Status. And just a you know the the short history of uh, of who we are. So you know we're a traditional systems integration firm. We focus in virtualization, and uh, over the last uh, 15 years, we've developed some very good methodology that has uh, been adopted by some of the major players like VMware, HP, Microsoft, and Citrix. And our main goal is to be able to deliver. Uh, on time, in scope, and within budget, every single project that we do every time. So I want to share just some, some key dates in our history, which kind of correlate to some of the things that uh, we're going to be talking about today. And I'm only going to be talking for a few minutes and going over some, uh, some client detail. But Landstatus was founded in 2001 as a remote monitoring and management company. Now back in 2001, Monitoring and management was significantly different than it is today, and I'm going to talk about that in a few slides. The, uh, in 2001, there was no such thing as uh, real virtualization. Citrix was pretty early on, um, and we became one of the, the first Citrix engineering-style companies, not people who sold a lot of product up here. And 2004 became the Citrix Northeast Partner of the Year. We identified that there was kind of a gap in the marketplace around the healthcare markets, uh, and in 2005, formed an organization called the Avitas Partners, about 200 US-based engineering resources. And what we were doing is looking at best practices and methodologies across the Americas to deliver to our client base. As you can see through the, through the dates, we focused very much in that Citrix and VMware and Microsoft space all around virtualization and recently became uh, the very first VMware end user computing Amplify partner in, uh, in the United States, of which there are now nine worldwide, focused very much in end user computing around VMware and Citrix technologies. Now, back in 2012, we created a program called the SIP Partner Program. We have over 80 reseller partners to date, and these are companies that leverage us for our expertise Basically, we tell people, don't leave any money on the table. If you're doing VMware and you need Citrix assistance, we do that. If you're a Citrix partner and you need VMware or Microsoft or others, we can support you in those ways. So I want to share a, uh, you know, one of our very first, um, my very first sales call. So back in August of 2001, I started up this company, and I had just shut down a consulting firm. And in 2001, um, HP OpenView and CA Unicenter were the two monsters in the monitoring and remote management space. And that was kind of where we, our direction was going to, to go. And I went on this sales call, 
and it was to uh, a company called Reader's Digest. Many people have probably heard of them. They're based in New York. And I met with a gentleman who said, I've seen all of the technology that's out there. And what I'm, the problem is everybody needs to deploy an agent in order to monitor my environment. And those agents might only work for a Linux platform or Unix platform, mainframe platform, or a server platform. But I've got Macs here, and I've got servers, and I've got routers, and I've got everything. And what I'm looking for is something that's agentless, something that can talk multi-platform to all of these different uh, areas, something that could leverage both SNMP and Windows Management Interface, WMI, which was very, very early on. It was just introduced back in 2001. And after that, I kind of walked back to, uh, to my office, and I looked and I said, you know, there's no one technology today, one monitoring package today that can, you know, do all of the things that this particular customer, you know, is asking for. And this kind of started us on a, you know, on a path of trying to identify best of breed products to monitor all of the different environments. Now, back in 2001 and previous, things were very different than they are today. You know, back in those days, when something broke, it tended to stay broken. You know, we had hard drives that spun. We had printers um, that had just started using ink uh, to spit out. And when something happened, it tended to stay broken. Something broke and, and it stayed there. And when it was broken, there was only one thing that was broken a RAM chip went down, a network cable was broken. There was too much distance between the users. But there was a direct cause and effect. You could see that no users could connect because the network was down, the router was down, and there was only one place that you had to look. And this goes all the way back to when I started in this industry, before there was networking, we always had this concept of it's one thing, you need to find the root cause analysis of the problem, and you identify it, and then you resolve it. And you resolved it on the first try because you replaced one part, and everything went back to work. Now, today, things are a little bit different. And it's a significant difference in, in an area where, um, you know, from our clients' perspectives, they have a real time, real hard time understanding and a real hard time troubleshooting these things. Today, when something breaks, you know, it tends to break for just a few seconds and then everything goes back to normal. And you might not know why something has broken. And the customer will come to us and say, well, you know, yesterday at 2 o'clock it was slow but then everything went back to normal. You know, at five o'clock, everything rebooted, but we don't know why. Uh, you know, during these times of day, people can't log on to our system, and, but then everything was fine after that. So things tend to break, and then they seemingly go back to normal because nothing actually fixes itself. So we have to go, you know, take a look. And the other issue that's different today than yesterday is multiple things cause the symptoms. So someone who says, uh, you know, we've seen the, you know, all of the blame game with Citrix is slow, or my desktop is slow, or the web is slow. Slow is a very nebulous uh, kind of thing, and it's based on the perspective of the individual that's doing it. But what caused that to happen? And then when you call them, because you got the help desk ticket, they say, oh, no, everything's working fine now. And you go back and look, and it might have been that the network was slow or the hard drive cache was filling up or there were more users on the system today than before. Or perhaps somebody was watching, you know, YouTube videos, we'll say for training purposes, and was slowing down the network. And the other thing that's different today, yesterday you used to own yesterday. your equipment. Oh, I hear an echo. So yesterday you used to own your equipment, 
And today, things can be really outside of your control. So you might have a network team that's monitoring your network. Your desk side services may be outsourced to another company, and they may be doing things that are impacting you, and you don't know why those things are uh, those things are happening. So things are really different today than they were even five years ago. So I want to go over just a couple of case studies. I have two case studies that um, I think are really common kinds of uh, things that we see every day. And as I told the Sangati reps, there are many uh, partner, you know, many types of uh, case studies that we could go to. But we do a lot in hospitals and healthcare. So our first is a hospital that's up here in the Northeast, actually in New York. And we got the call because the client faced downtime for their clinicians. What was happening was they had users at some of their locations that could not launch applications. And they have users at other sites that could launch applications without any problems. And they would go in to their web interface and the IT staff looked and it all looked correct and everything worked for the IT staff. As a matter of fact, when an IT person went to the customer site, they found there were several machines that could work and some that could not. Um, they started troubleshooting this. And in troubleshooting it, they went down the very standardized troubleshooting routines. Is network connectivity good? Yes, I can ping. Yes, I have connectivity. Yes, my latency is good. They went and they looked at the farm. Everything looked good at the farm. From everything looking good at the farm, the green lights were green. They didn't have any kind of analysis tool that could go on and see what was going on behind the scenes, only that applications were launching and there were no issues in the error logs. So they went to licensing to see whether or not people could, uh, you know, were getting licenses or not, both on the Microsoft side and on the Citrix side, and that looked good as well. So faced with the fact that uh, they were now on their third day of having some people not able to access systems and they were going through paper to uh, take care of clients, uh, you know, their patients' needs, they called us in and we actually put Zangati on the network and tied it into their infrastructure. And what we started to see was that there was a combination of elements. Um, one of the ideal things about Zangati is that it already has some best practices built in, so we didn't have to learn the network. When we started an analyzing the systems, we identified that, yes, the network connectivity was good. Yes, their storage systems were good. Yes, their farm was behaving normally. But at the sites that were having problems, they were seeing lots of different uh, network paths and network drops and retries. And analyzing that even further, we were able to identify that someone had added some routers to the network, had not documented it, and they were stepping on equipment that was already there. It's interesting to see that sometimes the tool has to be used to identify what the problem isn't as much as what it is. And we were able to actually go and show them that the performance of their systems was actually well in line with where it should be based on other people's experiences but that it was a network type issue that was causing their overall problem. The next case study that I have, a very similar kind of, um, kind of system, you know, they had intermittent failures on Citrix access. And I love intermittent problems, uh, different than sporadic problems, at least intermittent ones happen on a regular kind of frequency. And while we weren't able to recreate it every single time, we saw that when we clicked on a, an application link, we were not getting any application launches. Now, people from the outside of the company worked fine, but inside the company, they intermittently couldn't launch their desktop. What we found through our investigation, though, was that people from the outside of the company were used to having frequent drops of their connection, so they just weren't complaining about the problem. And this is a very, very common thread that we have with our customers, 
is that at a certain point, people stop calling the help desk. They say it's slow. Well, it's always slow, and they weren't able to fix it last time, so I'm not going to call back again. And user satisfaction tends to, tends to wane. So in this particular company, it's a large financial services, actually a global financial services firm. Uh, as we are looking at the launches, there were actually nothing in the error logs that identified any problem whatsoever. And they, everything looked completely normal. All of the same types of checks going through their complete VDI environment, going through their storage environment, going through their, um, their VMware environment. There were no logs or issues that could be identified at any point. They were putting network sniffers on the line to see whether or not uh, packets were being dropped, whether it was resource uh, you know, dependent and they could not identify anything. What we found as we started loading up uh, you know, our tool sets was that it was a combination of events that were causing the problem. You know, when the storage write cache was overloaded and there were too many people that were on the system using up all of the system resources and somebody happened to be downloading large amounts of data. During these you know, times, multiple people would get the fact that they could not launch. And so we had to actually correlate the data from a variety of different sources to come up with an action plan that was able to resolve the issue. Uh, we made it better and better and better until the problem was completely resolved. So, that's really all I have today. I wanted to just share with you guys uh, a couple of um, slides on the resources that uh, you know that we have and what we've seen. We have a lot of case studies that are similar to this, and I'd be happy to talk to anybody individually about uh, about the types of things that we've uh, that we've seen. So, I'll pass it back to you, Lauren. Thank you, Brian, and thank you for your time today. I think it was a very uh, good profile and also offering your support for others that might be looking for uh, a partner. Uh, it's great to have you on. Thank you. Now what I'd like to do is um, kick it over to Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy Bular is our corporate um, SESI and he's going to show you how uh, our uh, solution um, handles the uh, the the things that, that um, Brian had pointed out. So, uh, Jimmy, why don't you go ahead and uh, uh, take folks through what Zingati does today? Sure. Okay. Can everybody see the scoreboard scoreboard thing on the dashboard on the meeting? Somebody just so I know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to go, so this is what our Zangari dashboard looks like, and uh, I'll go through uh, a couple highlight points of the dashboard. So as you can see, there's different scores and numbers, colors. So, I mean, we want the user to focus on, um, I mean, obviously yellow and uh, red, right? So what this means is that we we look at performance, availability, relative capacity, and efficiency, and uh, we correlate. Uh, so. Uh, I don't know if um, so. So the, let me just go a little, little backwards a little bit to see tell you how Zingadi collects data. So this is a VDI dashboard. So what we do is we look at um, NetFlow data underneath all the networking data. We're talking to the broker at the same same time, like a Zen Desktop broker or VM or View broker, and and we you can also tie NetScaler into it. And we look at the NetScaler data. Then what we do is we time correlate all that data, and uh, we'll will giving you a score depending on how your desktop pools are using, how the users are using, how are the desktops doing and clients and everything. All the data we can see and this is all this is also in line also talking to Zen Server directly or vCenter and uh, and giving you like a full picture from end to end. That that way you can tell like if there's any hop in between is uh, performing badly. So so the whole, the whole point here is trying to give you like a bigger picture rather than each just separate silo that you go and investigate. You know, this way, like just uh, for example, if you click on desktops right now, it's, it has a lot of warnings on it. As you can see, there's different alerts that are being created. And you can see there's a memory swap, there's CPU ready, data store write latency. 
So one of the best features that Zingari has is the recording feature. So uh, whenever a threshold is cr uh, crossed, like for example, uh, we'll take this one, this is data store write latency, and you can hit playback. What what it does is as soon as a threshold is crossed in Zingari environment, we start recording everything. The reason is that so you can, uh, it's, it's just like a DVR. You can play it back and forth and kind of really uh, see what's going on. And let me try to scroll this down so you can see it better. Okay, so as you can see, we, we clicked on a recording and at the bottom, recording starts right away when the threshold is uh, crossed and it will keep going as long as the threshold is being crossed. So once the environment stabilizes or this particular alert stabilizes, wow. it will stop recording. So in this one, as you can see, the uh, it's orange is showing the right latency on um, data stores high, read latency is high. So this gives you right off the bat. And then you can go kind of uh, move this bar and see different values change on the screen. So you really kind of, you can pinpoint, okay, where did it go up? Where did it go down? While it was, go, while it was up, uh, data store right latency was high. Well, what else was going on? And you can really, you can really see what's going on in the environment. It'll show you the bit rate, it'll show you the CPU usage, data store. So you can correlate all this information, but we're, we're basically trying to highlight what's going on and giving you a really, really a detailed view of the environment at the time the alert was happening. So you don't have to go talk to your data store guys or storage people or networking. We're trying to highlight exactly what the issue was. So, so any any kind of a score you'll see if it's red or red or yellow, you click on it, you'll go to a corresponding uh, a recording uh, which is alert. We we also Zangadi engine also uh, calculates all these alerts and we call them the storm tracker. So what we're trying to do is focus our customers more into storm tracker. So what Storm Tracker is is basically it aggregates all the alerts and uh, kind of does a root cause analysis. So instead of uh, you chasing high level alerts saying, okay, this VM is having a storage issue, this VM is having another VM is having storage issue or storage contention, what this does it will tie all the alerts together and give you okay and give you a root cause. So let's look at uh, one of the storms. So as you can see, recently there's been a storm that says data store contention. At the bottom, you'll see all the objects that are being affected by it. So in the alerts tab, you would have got you got got a six alerts that are related to a similar root cause, right? So what we're trying to do is instead of you chasing down hundreds of alerts, we will find root cause and we'll tell you okay what to do about it. So at the top, if you highlight a storm and you say analyze, oh actually I've done it already. So for the time already done it, it will kind of give you like a report that shows that what desktops are being affected, what clients are being affected. IT servers are basically anything in the virtual infrastructure, right? And we also give you objects that are not being, they're not part of uh, this uh, VDI, but, or, and also we'll kind of highlight one VM that is causing all this. So this is kind of like a high level report that tells you exactly what's going on. And then you can hit the recommend button. What the recommendation does, it kind of generates a little, uh, little, uh, what what you can do about it, right? So it says upgrade the data store that it can handle more I/O. So sometimes as simple as that, uh, that we're just telling you you have you know, your storage can't or data store can't handle all the I/Os at this time, and you have, or 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 you see the line here going up, meaning your your storms on that particular data stores are trending upward. So do you still have time? Currently the storms happen, they go away, but eventually you need to you need to work on this, otherwise you can have a lot of these storms happening all the time. So this is similar, this is a pretty si pretty simple uh, remediation, and uh, and this is how we, we do give you a report form at this time. And uh, you can do the same thing with the recordings, like uh, with the storms, you can uh, play back a recording. It, it's the same exact, um, the same exact like alert. You can just go back and forth and the different things will, uh, so highlight like as you can see on this one the couple of circles are dark gray which means some storm is happening on this uh, on these hosts and uh, if there's a light if it's light blue then the host is fine and, and we can give you like there's a lot of reporting functionality to it if you go to capacity daily efficiency you can you can basically run any reports you can think of like against the host and uh, we'll see let me see can run one quickly 
and you see what kind of CPU usage, and you can also see, okay, is it trending upward, is downward? And we'll, without even you checking into it, we'll give you these alerts. We'll give you these uh, storms and storms and uh, alerts to your emails, so you know ahead of time if you're going to run out of capacity, or 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 it could be the other way around, right? Your using environment is running good, but it's not that efficient. You're running at 50% uh, capacity, but but we can also give tell you, okay, your environment is good, but it's not efficient. Maybe you want to turn off some VMs to um, turn off some VMs to make it more efficient to save power and other resources. So that was a storm tracker, and right now, it, when you click on storm tracker, um, uh, different window. In the future, we'll we'll integrate this window all everything into one. So sometimes you'll call, you'll have users call in where where they they're not part of the storm. You can't proactively uh, uh, proactively see the, what's going on. A user will call in saying, "Okay, you know what? I'm still my desktop is really laggy, right?" And you, then you can really go into performance uh, tab and where we really summarize everything. You can see we have desktop pools, we have users, we have desktops, and it gives you all kinds of data, clients, even even the host to client paths and data stores. And we can directly tie into if you have a NetApp. Um, NetApp uh, storage, we can directly talk to the controller, and over here, as you can see, we can directly talk to the controller and get the statistics from the controller instead of the in, instead of the hypervisor. So you can see, we we each each separate silo, we give you all kind of values you're looking for, and this is uh, in sometimes when you really need to dig deeper and trying to find a user user issue. So just for this example, right, we say user VDI one user called, and they're having some issues. So as you can see on the screen, I pulled up a username, and then it kind of gives you statistics, right? Okay, this this user is running on a VDI client 01, and it's using HDX, and it, it looks looks fine at the bottom. So you can see the CPU usage, the data store byte rate, and everything is fine. Then you can uh, you can click on right here to get to the desktop that user is running on. So it's running on Zen desktop, and you can see it's having some um, write latency issue. So this is basically, and you can go one step further. You can say, okay, this Zen desktop is running uh, fine, and let me go click this button, and what it does, it give, goes to the host that's running the Zen desktop on. And th these are manual steps sometimes because uh, you you will get uh, uh, complaints where users will not be part of stormed alerts, so you won't be able to see it, but you have to figure it out. And this is uh, one of the methods to figure it out. <coughs> And user, uh, another cool thing about Zangadi is user can submit a ticket. It's called a virtual trouble ticket. They can go to, you can integrate a web uh, website that part of our appliance into your uh, trouble ticket system, and they can just click on link. And uh, what it does is basically uh, starts recording their environment as soon as they submit a ticket. So it it, it, uh, it was just like a recording I showed you earlier. It will record for 30 minutes. So you can pinpoint uh, on from user's perspective what's going on, and it will really, and it will be just like this recording that you will receive an email. You click on the link, this recording will pop up, and you you can really move it back and forth and see okay where 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 exactly the user was having an issue, and uh, you that's a really cool feature feature on uh, on the uh, making things a lot easier for support. Okay, and another thing I wanted to show you is the executive uh, dashboard. So this is an executive dashboard. This is like like the name says, it's really geared for executive. It's not it's not dynamic. It's mostly static per day. So this is like a little visual report that gets generated every day, and it's it's more of a trending thing. How's the user experience? How's the how's the performance? And and they can click on it, and they can say compared to past. Like, has the user experience uh, improved or? Or gone down, so it'll just kind of tell you like, okay, it was improved by one percent, it was down by two percent. So, so this is really high level, <coughs> and uh, this can be sent as a report every day, or it can be, or it, or or you can uh, go to a dashboard and uh, look at executive. You can look at this uh, uh, dashboard. So this was a really like a high level, and we can we can dig deeper. If uh, you have a customer that wants to get a demo or a POC, and uh, we can really help you with this. So, Re right. register your deals in the partner portal, 
and we'll go ahead and make sure that uh, uh, Jimmy or another SE is assigned to that deal and can help you close that business while you get trained. Okay, and uh, any questions? If you have any questions, you can say it or type, type it in, it in chat. chat. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll send you the recording, Bob. Okay, uh, so just a, a, a little bit on, on Zingati and the program that we're running today. Um, what I'd like to do is just take you through a little bit on our partner program, high level, and then show you some new um, tools that we just launched, which are uh, promos that are running this month, and I'll show you where those can be found on the partner portal. Um, so our program at the premier level is 20% base points, 10% for deal registration. So make sure that you register your deals. For authorized, it's 10 and 10. And uh, we just launched our training program, so that's now available. And testing uh, is now available. So we'll, we'll be running a campaign to get everyone trained, uh, both technical and sales teams. Um, as you see, Premier uh, will get you uh, events like this. So for Brian, um, uh, co-marketing, uh, things that we'll do uh, directly to our end users and to his end users to try and raise awareness and visibility. So Premier is, is definitely a, a nice uh, way to go. Um, uh, let me see here. Okay. Uh, now what we talk about with our partners is build a consultative practice with Zingati. So build a health check service or a performance uh, recommendation service or a managed service where you're, you were the one managing Zingati on behalf of your customer and delivering a weekly executive report like Jimmy showed that would allow you to uh, get a seat at the table with the CIO to get additional resources for the IT infrastructure based on the reports and recommendations that Jimmy showed you. Um, and then attend training, which I'll show you in a second. And then get NFR ready. So we do have a 100% a discount, not for resale license, for your lab or EBC. And uh, that'll keep your people uh, sharp and allow them to do demos for themselves. And then create and design your wraparound services. Test it with your customers. And then pay your people on margin. So we'll, we'll talk about that strategic packaging in a second. And then build collateral, customer outreach, thought leadership, and then uh, manager renewals because uh, the 20% base uh, discount is available to you every year. Now that we're an annual subscription service, you'll want to renew your customers every year or with the promos that we currently have, sell a one, two, or three year contract at upfront which will auto renew and deliver an invoice to you that you'll pass through to your customer. So it's a three year commitment. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. So uh, when you look at the, the types of P&L you'll want to set up, the first is probably 15% gross profit margin. The second, maybe 30% gross profit margin to your business. The, the last one can be 50 to 75% gross profit margin, depending on the cost of your resources. Uh, so the first service I'll show you is a health check service. What we've done is we've packaged Zangati in a one-month, two-month, or three-month package. And that, that would be a hard cost to you, minus 30% when you register that health check. So the health check is about $500 per month, which allows you to then add your professional services. And you might charge a health check at $5,000 or maybe $10,000, depending on how pained the customer is with their infrastructure migration. And then as you uh, build that, that solution, then make sure you put the the bill of materials together, which will include new storage, new servers, maybe uh, uh, balancing uh, some of the, the VMs, um, whatever the recommendations that comes out of the Zangati health check. And then also put your Zangati on the bill of materials. Now you have an annual service that is part of your implementation launch. And then you'll, you'll also charge professional services to implement the new equipment plus the, the new balancing plus the Zangati. Once that's on there, you can pay uh, or uh, deliver a training service, which will allow the IT staff to get up and running. And it might be a quarterly service, so it will become an annuity asset so that you can train people on an ongoing basis. Or you may charge a good, better, best um, service that says uh, we'll respond to, once you've optimized a Zingati, 
uh, will respond to 50 alerts, 100 alerts, or 200 alerts, good, better, best, that provide you a support package where you are actually using Zingati that you're, uh, the customer is paying for annually on a regular basis for your customer. Now this might look like on your website, health check with recommendations, maybe a business transformation service like uh, uh, Brian talked about, and then you may have day two operate service, which is your optimize and ongoing training or your managed service with daily SLAs uh, using Zengati or a managed service report. And this is 100% your revenue minus whatever costs you have. Um, so w to become a partner, you would go to uh, zengati.com uh, slash partners and join the program by registering. If you're already an active partner, I'll show you what's behind the screen um, as far as the partner portal, the tools. Once you accept the uh, contract and NDA after being qualified, then uh, you'll enter the, the portal and you'll get the quick start toolkit, the logos, etc., and a bunch of how-to guides, which includes deal registration. And then get trained by watching Zingati videos and demos that we currently have. And then when you register your deal, uh, a SE would be assigned to your deal to help you close that business until your people are fully trained by following folks like Jimmy. On the partner portal to register, you'll click register here. All this information is put into a partner uh, relationship management system. And then you're able to log in once the contract has been set up. So that's usually a conversation with me on your qualification as a Zingati partner. And then you're able to get into the Zingati partner uh, Portal. So a little bit on the partner portal and what's new on the partner portal. We just launched new um, uh, promos as well as a training program. So on our, our current program, let's go here to the library, um, you're able to go into training and in training you're able to get sales training or SE training which includes overcoming objections, uh, training uh, assessment tests, which you'll be required to take as an SE and a salesperson. If you're just a salesperson, you just take the, uh, the sales assessment test. Overcoming objections in, in PowerPoint and in um, a video link, and then a product overview um, in both PowerPoint and video, and then ROI presentation and uh, the overall curriculum. So you'll be able to see uh, the, the the technical person will take both the sales assessment test and the technical assessment test. And we have the PowerPoint here, as well as a, a ROI presentation and overview. All of the assets will be necessary in order to test out. Now, a little bit on promotions. We have two promotions running, so you can get up to 40% discount. If you happen to have a customer who is selling Citrix Edge Site, there is a promotion that if they're looking for a replacement per Edge Site, Zingati makes a perfect uh, relationship because we, we are funded by Citrix. Uh, you'll want to go ahead and put Zingati in front of them to take over that business, and then you'll fill in your order form and cite the Edge Site Migration Program for an additional 10% on your already 20% uh, uh, base plus 10% uh, deal registration. We also have a multi-year promo where uh, the, the second year will be an additional 5%, and if they commit to three years up front, they'll get another 5%, which gives you a total of 10% of, uh, on the multi-year discount, auto-renew every year for the commitment of three years. And um, that's on top of your uh, registered deal plus your base discount of 30 points. Now, for more on, on uh, pricing, make sure that you go to the uh, how to order uh, Zingati bundles which come in silver, gold, and platinum. I'll just show you a little bit on this program just so you, uh, you see this. Um, you, we have the health check service, which is in the how-to guide, and the pricing on a per-month basis. And we also have uh, this slide that you've seen before, the health check service plus the implementation service plus the managed service. And then the pricing itself on the, on the platforms are, let me show you that, um, silver, gold, or platinum. I would suggest that you add your own service of silver, gold, and platinum on top that include your additional pass-through services like we talked about. So this is the pricing per year for a 10-hour uh, 7x24 or a 
7 by 24 plus the executive dashboard that you can leave behind with your customer, keeping IT fresh in the minds of the CIO. So um, with that, I'd like to make sure um, I open up with any questions. Please type into the, um, the uh, chat if you have any questions on the tools or assets that we showed you today. Um, and make sure that if you don't have your login for the partner portal, for pricing access and deal registration, make sure that you reach out to me and I'll go ahead and make sure that you have the um, login necessary to um, get into the portal. Now with that, I would like to thank Brian and Jimmy for their time in this uh, uh, webinar. And if you need a recording, just reach out to us and we'll go ahead and send a recording of this um, uh, website uh, uh, demo and demo and uh, tour uh, to you. I don't see any um, uh, questions. So at this point, thank you, Brian, for joining us. And uh, thanks to all of you for, um, for being here. And good night, good morning, or good evening. And we'll uh, talk to you again soon next month. Bye-bye.